Pandeo, Alawaiwe, Rison, Nere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Kalo, Abana, Son, Nere, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Kalo, Abana, Son, Nere, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Kenneth on the Lord of San Dio. Kevin Lava is so tiri. Seven ladders on the day. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallo, Avana son the day. Kevin is so tiri. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are worthy, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hello, I it is on the Lord of Sotio. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Rain down, Lord. Rain down. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Yes. You, Lord. You, Lord. Hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus. Yes, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, man, hello, everyone. I hope all is well. Um, God is so good. I hope you've had a good week. Um, but, you know, no matter what, Oh, God is good. No matter what we face, no matter what we see. Um, and he's moving mightily. He is. He's he's uh he's a good, good God. And uh, what an honor and a privilege to walk with him and to have the assurity that he's right there. That he's working it all out and that he's on our side. You know, imagine, I can imagine a time when he was against me, yet he was still there with me. But he, he, he was against me. He, um, he wasn't happy with, with the sin in my life. He wasn't happy with the way that I was living, but he still was there with me. You know, but oh, how it is to know that he's pleased. Thank you, Jesus. To know that he's right there and he's rooting us on in the way that we are going. Yeah, it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, I'm going to, uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1. And 27, and I'll tell you this, the things we face in life um, can gauge, you know, whether we're moving forward. Sometimes things are just great, you know, and that's just real. And sometimes we face such opposition and we have to <laughs> find that place where we celebrate it where we celebrate the opposition, we celebrate, you know, the, the, the warfare or the loved one that's hurting or, um, you know, the, the car breaking down or the, this or the, that, or, you know, even people, uh, rejecting us or, or coming against us or whatever. Um, and I don't mean that we celebrate the bad things. That's not what I mean, but we celebrate the warfare because we know, that God is doing something and he uses everything. 
He uses everything. And it is a time that he's using the foolish things, <laughs> the rejected things, the despised things. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we can praise him through it all. Thank you, Jesus. I'm at 1 Corinthians 1 and 27, and I know that God has something so powerful to say. I know he does. And I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. <laughs> and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty and the base things of the world and the things which are despised. God has chosen and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are that no flesh should glory in his presence <laughs> hallelujah but of him you are in Christ Jesus who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that as it is written he who glories <laughs> let him glory in the Lord <laughs> amen powerful stuff right there and you know the Word of God is living and active and we can never read it too many times there's always more they're like nuggets of gold that pop out right when you need it. I want to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you for your amazing grace, Lord. Thank you for your amazing grace. Thank you, Lord, that you pour out freely. Thank you, Lord, that you have a purpose for everything, the good, the bad, the in-between. Thank you, Jesus, that you give us strength to endure the shame, <laughs> to endure being rejected, to endure being despised, to endure and to count it all joy. Thank you, Lord, for who you are, that, that we can walk with you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord, that this is, it's all just temporary. The, the, the good, the bad, the in-between, it's, it's nothing compared to eternity. Thank you for, for keeping our eyes on your kingdom, Lord. Thank you for keeping our eyes on you, Lord. Thank you for reminding us of who we are and what we're really put here for, Lord. Thank you. For everything yes thank you Jesus for all of it thank you for the testimonies going forth in this hour like never before to draw the lost the young the old to draw them all to you Lord hallelujah I thank you Jesus that you would use me Lord that you would allow me to be a vessel of honor, to speak your, your words, to say what it is that you want to say, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all for you, Jesus. It's all to glorify your name, Jesus. Let my life bless you, Lord. Let my words bless you, Lord. Let it all be a sweet smelling aroma, Lord. Remove my flesh. Remove my wretched flesh. Let it be your spirit that speaks and moves and says whatever it is that you want to say to your children. In this time, and I praise you, Lord. Oh, for sanctification. Hallelujah. I praise you, Lord, for redemption. I praise you, Lord, for the strength to endure. 
Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Your precious, holy, and mighty name. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Hello, on the day. Oh, hallelujah. You know, I see a clock spinning. I see a clock spinning. And he says, I'm redeeming the time. <laughs> he says, I'm redeeming the time. I'm using those foolish things, those foolish places you've been, those foolish things you've done. I'm using those very things to glorify my name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, there's nothing better than you, Lord. Hallelujah. You see, the world is lost and it's hurting and they have been so hurt. Wow. Yes, Lord. A religion. They have been so hurt by religious organizations, religious individuals. Religion kills. You know, the Lord spoke to me yesterday and he said, religion has killed so many people. It's such an ugly thing. And this is a time where we must be careful of our words. Hello, Yes. In this moment, I bind up the, the critical spirit that's moving in the church. And I bind it up in Jesus' name. I bind up the critical spirit. In Jesus' mighty name. Let us stop pointing our fingers. Let us stop pointing our fingers at our brothers and our sisters. Let us stop trying to figure out what it is that they're doing, where they are with God, and what do they need to do different. Let us stop. It is not our job, my God. It is the job of God. It is the job of the Holy Spirit. And God is raising up an army. But it requires healing. The leaders of the leaders of an army. Yes, Lord, I hear you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. The leaders of an army, you know, you think about if you're in an army and you're a leader and you've been in battle before and you've been in battle before and just so many battles, right? You begin to have these preconceived notions of how the battle's going to go. No, we've got to be healed. We've got to be made whole before we can give orders to someone else. Hello on a Sunday, Jesus. Jesus, God is using the foolish things in such a way that says, hey, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Are we glorying in ourselves? Have we, have we become so self-righteous that we can find a, a place of comfort in pointing the fingers at other people? And if we be real, we've done it. Everyone, we've all done it. It's a time to examine <laughs> Those fingers that are pointing back at us, right? There's, there's more to point back at us. Um, and I, I'm going to let the spirit flow. Um, you know, I like to say I want to be fast. And I want to, you know, give this word. But he's God. I'm not. And oftentimes we get in this place where we... We overcome some things, right? And, and okay, we're living in obedience, right? And we're, we're doing what God's telling us to do. And well, well, what about you? Well, what about you? And what are you doing? And what are we doing? And no, no. That's where we become the accuser of the brethren. And it's so easy to get it twisted. It's so easy to have the right intentions 
without the heart of purity. Because we're wounded, because we've been hurt, because we've been traumatized. God is raising up a group of leaders. <laughs> I hear you, Lord, that walk in grace and mercy in such a way that they demonstrate Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes. They demonstrate his love. They demonstrate his truth. They don't have to tell you. They will just show you. Thank you, Jesus. I am at 1 Corinthians 4 and 4. For I know of nothing against myself, yet I am not justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. Thank you, Jesus. This is a time where the army that God is rising up is are those very people that even the brothers and sisters have 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 rejected. Even you know the the church has rejected the the world has rejected. They have found themselves in a place of <laughs> being alone with Jesus. Being rejected for the glory of God, but God has has glorified Himself in them. My God, my God, my God. Because you know, no one else is gonna stand there on that day and face your judgment. <laughs> you hear me? Nobody else is gonna stand there on that day, but that person, whoever they are, we each will be held accountable. And oftentimes we have the best of intentions, but we find glory in our flesh. We feel a little self-righteous of what we've accomplished, but really, if we tell the truth, we haven't accomplished anything at all. God has been the one. Yes, Lord. God has been the one. Once he say, I'm at 1 Corinthians 3. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. He said, if I should be lifted up, I will draw all men to me. You know, but can we find joy in being rejected, mocked? persecuted, misjudged. We must, we must, we, we have to, to find joy in these things, to find joy in this place, and even more, to pray, <laughs> to pray for those very ones, <laughs> because we can get it twisted, we can get it wrong, and it's, it's, uh, God wants to use those very places. He wants to use those very things. He wants to use those very people. And he wants to use you to bring it about. He wants to use you to shine a light into those dark places. And it is not comfortable. This is a time where the spirit of God is, is it's kind of like, you know, the children in the wilderness where God, you know, you know, his presence was in the cloud and, and they followed it, right? It's, it's a time where we, we've got to, um, if you're not already there, get there. <laughs> I know, right? Jesus. We've got to walk out of that comfort. We've got to follow that presence. We've got to go where, where God's telling us to go. And, um, the opposition that you're facing in every area of your life is just confirmation that God is using you in a mighty way. He's using your testimony. He's using those tears to water his kingdom. He's hearing your prayers and he sees your sacrifice and he knows. It's the beauty of it. He knows that you don't do it for any other reason but him. See, because 
to the world that seems foolish. Maybe even to some in the church that just seems so foolish. And it doesn't take all that. And, you know, well, I'm going to get sidetracked. And, 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 and no, you know, I've got other things to do. But for those of you who would so choose to literally pick up your cross, even when it's heavy, and carry it, you're going to see God use you in a mighty way. And he already is. And although this word may not resonate with everyone in their spirit, I know that this word is for, mm, I hear a company. I hear a company. Because uh, nobody can really understand us but God, you know. And when we get in that place and we get there where we try to understand people or things, um, we fall short. We fall short. You know, here we are trying to uh, pinpoint people and, and, and we point the finger at them. And God says it's an abomination because we're sowing discord among the brethren. And God just said, just love them. You know, be merciful to those who, we, who are merciful. You will be shown mercy. You know, um, people like to, to twist the Bible. The Bible says, do not judge. It, it simply says, do not judge. If you're going to judge, judge righteously. What does that mean? You, you discern good and evil. It's not people. Okay. Good and evil are principalities in high places. Anybody can find their way to God. But are you showing them who God is? Or are we showing them Satan? You know? It's so easy to get caught up in um, strife. You know, in the, in the, in the, in the, Yes, the babblings of, d d you know, um, disputing and, 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 you know, arguing the word and, well, this is what I think. And, well, this is, no, I don't agree with that. No, man, let's focus on Jesus. Let us glorify his name. You know, what good is it to come together and to cause God shame? You know, to come together and to, to tear down the brethren, you know, to, to, to think we're better or, you know, to point our fingers, Jesus. And God is raising up people who will speak what he says. God is raising up people who will be unpopular, people who will, will have the finger pointed at them. And people will not understand where they are with God. People will not see how, how God is moving oh so mightily in their lives, in their hearts, in their day-to-day, -day, in their moment. The fact that Jesus is, is living inside of them and manifested himself. They don't get it. They don't see because they are not focused on the right things. They're not focused on Jesus. Otherwise, we could all just come together in a place of unity and love. The devil wants division. He wants, you know, us to rank ourselves. Well, yeah, you know, I, I got this going on. I'm better than them. I'm, I'm doing more for the kingdom and blah, blah, blah. Man, it's all crap to God. I mean, for a lack of a better word, it's all just ugly to him. How about that? It's ugly to him. He just, he looks at it and he sees pride and he sees uh, envy and he sees, you know, bitterness. And you know what he sees? He sees hearts that are still wounded. <laughs> yes, Lord. You know, he's so kind, <laughs> you know, and he'll correct us when we're wrong. If we're listening to him, he sees hearts that are broken. He sees that pride is just insecurity. That pride is just a lack of um, walking tall in his kingdom, right? Pride is just like the opposite of our identity in God. And God can see these things better than we can, okay? 
much better than we can. We can't. And, and God forbid when we get in our flesh, it's so ugly. It's so ugly. This is a time where, you know, there's a, a camp and a company and an and army. And it's like the leaders in this army. Hallelujah. I see you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, the old things, the old things. Okay, um, that you've been dealing with in a cycle, in a cycle, in a cycle, and it just keeps coming around, and it just keeps coming around, and God is dealing with it, and I see him destroying it. I see him destroying these cycles that you've been going through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. The cycles the enemy has taken you through. You know, God has... Has, has spoken about doing a new thing, right? And that's Isaiah 43, 19, right? Well, what does he say? He says, when you, in, in, in um, just the beginning of 43, he says, he says, you are mine. And then he says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. And, you know, the Lord has been speaking about doing this new thing. And that's, that's what we didn't see. Or I didn't see. <laughs> Oh, you may have seen it. I sure didn't. How he was going to do this new thing or what exactly it meant or, you know, the, the weight of it or um, how heavy it can be in times, right? But the new thing that God is doing is already here. It's just not what it looked like to some of you. I know it isn't what I thought, you know, what this new thing was. At the season where we're beginning to walk in this new thing, it's so uneasy and it's hard. It's hard. It's like our hearts are just so heavy um, because his glory just rests there and his glory is heavy. You know, he's raised up a set of leaders um, that don't care about a title and they just want his love to, to abound. You know, how, do we, how does his love abound? We can't live in sin. I mean, these are the basic instructions, you know? And so let's move past that, right? Of course we can. Of course we have to continue to, to pour out this, to let him pour out his spirit, to be more like him. We, we can't live in sin. That's, that's elementary teachings, right? You know, once he's cleaned us up, you know, um, then what? You know, how do we walk in his love? Man, you know, it seems so simple, but it's it's so complicated because we make it that way, because we're fallen in nature, because we are deceived from the beginning, because, honey, I'm doing a video. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Because from the beginning, think about it. We are fallen. We are deceived. From the beginning, Adam and Eve were deceived. And, and we have these layers of deception, right? These layers of deception. And they've got to be ripped off. They've got to be peeled back. And when do we reach that place? Heaven. <laughs> we reach that place in heaven. And so we go through these these levels of opposition, okay? Right now, it's like we're breaking through. It's like the water that was meant to flood us is going to carry us, hallelujah, to that next place. Thank you, Jesus. But do not be deceived. The opposition will come. The, the warfare will come. Thank you, Jesus. It will come in mighty ways, and this will be our confirmation. This will be the, the, the knowledge that we are headed in the right place. Honey, you're going to have to wait a minute. Thank you. And I'm here to encourage somebody. 
I'm here to encourage you when they reject you that you're you're probably walking on the right path. I'm here to encourage you that if you don't feel like it, you're probably doing the right thing. I'm here to encourage you that God has sent you into places to destroy demonic activity in such a way, in such a level that all hell is shaking because you're walking forward in Jesus' mighty name. Rejoice in the opposition. Rejoice in the opposition. Rejoice in the fact that, ah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Quien es en el aire soteo a lo water soteri, Jesus. Se ve la razón de que veré soteo. Wow, yeah. Se lo van a sonar que no son tío. Because religion is one second. Not coming here again. You understand? I mean. I don't understand what's going on, but you, you have to wait. Jesus. Yeah, wow. Somebody really needs this word. I praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Kilo avanes on the rebe de soto lo. Kilo avanes on the ria. Yeah, because right now there are so many people that are facing this opposition and this warfare because religion and God's spirit are clashing in such a way that is breaking chains. It's breaking chains. It's pulling people out of darkness. And some of these people think they're already out of it. Some of these people feel as though they've already reached that place where they can lead. They think they know it all. They think they have it figured out. They think that they're better, okay? And it is causing the 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 true leaders. It is causing the the true uh, yes, the foolish things, for lack of a better word, the foolish things that God is using to confound the wise. It's causing them pain. It's causing them to be, you know, almost pushed down, you know, in this place of. You know, you feel like you're being pulled down, like you're being held back. But truly, you're being protected. You're being positioned. You're being edified so that you can fulfill this duty that God has given you, this, this calling, this magnitude. So find a place where you can go in your secret room, your, your moment alone with God, and you can say, God, help me. You know, our tears, they water our future, the future of others. You know, their breakthrough is our breakthrough. You know, their their you know, reaching a new level is, is us reaching a new level. And so what we cannot do, Jesus, this is for the leaders. My God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. What we cannot do is, is, is be bitter. Yes, Lord. We cannot allow Satan to do this our church. We cannot allow him to do this to our hearts. We have got to, like Jesus said, love the unlovable. Show them his grace and his truth. Pray for them to break through to their next level. Be patient and be kind because he is. He just is. He just is. And the one is on the Lord of Corazoteri, yes, Lord. We never know what someone is going through. We don't know why they are where they are. You know, um, we just, we don't have a clue why people are cold. We don't know why they're lukewarm. We don't know why they're addicted or they're this or they're that. We don't know. We're not them. We have not walked in their shoes and we're not God. 
you know, God is merciful. And yes, eventually, you know, we keep rejecting him. Yes, of course, there is an end. There is an end for each one of us where we will be, be granted a place in heaven or we will end up in hell. And either way, it's eternal. Absolutely, yes. Absolutely. And it is not that we, we skate around these things, okay? But you can't give a baby meat. And you can't understand anybody like God can. You cannot say you know. Is in that moment, it's the opposite. You really, you don't, you don't really have a clue. And, and you don't see how ugly your heart is in that moment. And we've all been there. Nobody is above it. I've done it. You know what? You know what I do? I go to God and I say, oh God, because it's so heavy and it's so ugly. And God, I'm sorry. Help me to magnify your name. Not the shame, not the, the things, not the people and the wrongdoings. No. Help me, Jesus, to magnify you. And there's a people that have been going through such a warfare, such a level of warfare, whether it's sickness and disease, whether it's this, you know, that. And it, it could be every area of your life. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Because <laughs> you're on the hit list, right? Hallelujah. You know, Jesus was on the hit list. Jesus was on Satan's hit list. And it's the list we want to be on. It might not look good to the world. The world might not want any part of that list. right? But we want to be on that list where things are just <laughs> chaotic. And then we have a breakthrough, you know. And there's a shaking in something that's so powerful happening where... Yes, God is putting those things down for good. He's, you know, it's kind of like he's, okay, that's it. I'm breaking these cycles. I'm breaking this, this circle that you keep on going through because we're wounded and we've got to be made whole. Because no flesh is going to glory, but we glory in Jesus. We glory in his name. We glory in his righteousness. We glory because of his blood. And it is only his blood. It is not what we do. It is not how we move. It is not how many souls and lives we touch. No, it's about his blood. And from that place, he will touch many. But it is not us. It is never us. It is him. It is him. And yes, it's in our obedience. But how minimal is this? It's the least that we could do for him. You know? Because he's so good. You know, he's so amazing. He loves us so much. Thank you, Jesus. I'm almost finished. Kilo Anison that even Lattice Lopeo. So for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Jesus didn't come to condemn us, you know, and here we are condemning us. Sometimes we condemn ourselves. We let the enemy beat us up. We, we let him get us off track. You know, we, we let him use us to beat other people up. Um, but God, you know, God will use all these things if we'll let him, you know, it's a time where the very, yes, Lord, the very things that are despised and rejected is, is what God is using. And <sighs> yeah, they despised and they rejected Jesus. It just means that 
we are more like him and more like him and more like him. And oftentimes the, the warfare that we face and the lies that, you know, the enemy comes with, it's actually the opposite, the exact opposite of what's really um, real. Surely he has borne our griefs. I'm at Isaiah 53 and 4. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Think of that. Everything that we've done, everything the world has ever done wrong, everything we'll do wrong in our future, God laid it on Jesus' back on the cross. What did he say? He said, it is finished. He said, it is finished. He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Now that is mercy. That is being merciful. That is grace. That is amazing because we can't do it. We cannot do it in our flesh. But by his spirit, he can do it. And he'll raise us up. He'll, he'll, he'll glorify himself in us. But he only exalts the humble. Those who don't care about being exalted. Those who don't care about anything but him, his glory, his kingdom. And I just want to encourage you that you are a warrior in Christ. You are a warrior for our God. And those times and those moments where you can't go on, where you're hurting, you're broken. Remember, he's with you. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> His spirit is ever present. He's always confirming in which way to go. And when you're facing these battles, it's just a sign that you're on the right path, that you're going the right way. And no, we shouldn't always be in warfare. Sometimes we have seasons of warfare. <laughs> you know, sometimes before a huge breakthrough, we have these, these crushing moments where we, we're getting fresh oil. Does it feel good? No. <laughs> no, it hurts. But it helps. It helps us to be more like Him. Because it's not about this. This is temporary. All of it is. Even our ministries. Everything. And God knows our hearts. He knows whether we're doing it for the right intention and reason. And that's for Jesus. Not for credit. <laughs> Not for credit. But just because of his love and how good he is. And we just want the world to experience it. Yeah. And I believe those people who know how ugly they can be are despised and rejected in the foolish things. And God is going to use your testimony mightily. God is going to use you in such a powerful way. And as you know, the, 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 the testimonies go forward as your influence, you know, in your, in your region, in your city, in your, you know, your home, even in your, in your workplace and et cetera, and et cetera, in your state, your name, as this increases, expect the warfare to increase, you know, um, it's a mighty time to serve God. It is. It's, 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 yes, Lord, we've got to be strengthened in the inner man. 
Ephesians 3. We've got to be strengthened in the inner man. You know, I'm not going to keep reading. Go there, you know, soak it in. Soak it in. You know, water yourself in that word like never before. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, he showed me. <laughs> the masterpieces. The workmanship. Ephesians 2.10, he showed me this in a vision. And he wants me to share it with you. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. So, <laughs> he has the, we're the canvas, right? We're the, we're the clay. He is the artist and the painter, right? <laughs> and, you know, he's making us beautiful. But he showed me his paintbrush. And the strokes can be so painful. And he dipped his brush in the paint and it was labeled. The color was pain and affliction and rejection and, and opposition and trauma. And, you know, he's dipping his paintbrush in these colors. But he's building and creating this masterpiece. And then I saw there's so many in this time. So many masterpieces that God has created from the foundation of the world. But no, they can't earn his grace. They know it's a gift. That it's freely given. But rejoice. Because he's using you mightily. Thank you, Jesus. I love you all so much. And I, I just hope and I pray and, I, and, I, and my soul resonates with the fact that I know there was at least one that needed this word. Religion won't do it. Organizations won't do it. And his spirit is clashing. And there's a movement of foolish things. Where will you be? What side will you stand on? I'm a stand with God. <laughs> Until the next time, be blessed. Thank you, Jesus.